watching West Hartford Community TV. For the community, by the community. You're watching West Hartford Community TV. Can I get off? Hello and welcome to What's Happening West Hartford. I have a celebrity in the house once again. I have uh, Shane Lewis from, he's an author and a reality star slash globetrotter slash a whole bunch of stuff. But I'd like to welcome you to the studio. Thanks Adele, it's fun. Um, just get ready. Got a lot of questions for <laughs> All you. All right, let's go. Well, well, I'll just start off with, let's just break it down so everyone knows exactly who you are. You're from, uh, Afraid and Naked on the Discovery Channel. Yep. And tell me a little bit about your experience on um, that reality show. Um, the premise was that they dropped us off uh, in a undisclosed location. We had four days warning of where we were going. Um, and even at that, we didn't get proper information. And they dropped us off in the middle of nowhere, 100% naked with a person I'd never met before and didn't know anything about. Um, and I was supposed to catch my own food, build my own lodging, collect my own water, and try to survive for 21 days. Now, is this something that you've done before? I do, I've done a lot of survival things around the world in my backpacking experiences and picked up a lot of skills, but I have equipment with me normally and some gear that I'm comfortable with. It was very interesting to be stripped down with nothing. <laughs> right. And did you prepare for this? I mean, I know that you travel, but... I prepared my body physically for the breakdown because I knew I wasn't going to get any sugar or glucose or anything like that or, you know, complex carbohydrates. So I, would, I really prepared my body and, and had a strict diet for five weeks prior to going on location. Okay. And your partner, was this somebody that you knew ahead of time? Uh, no, I had, I had I'd met her once in a casting session just to do some icebreakers. But when I met her in L.A., we were not allowed to talk about who we were, our names or anything. It was just, you know, you're just going to do your casting stuff. And we weren't allowed to discuss our skill levels, where we were born, where we were from, our, even our names. We were just in a room playing little games. Okay. So for those of you that haven't seen the episode, I won't give too much. That way you guys can catch it because it is online. Um, was your partner worthy enough to work with you for 21 days? No, my partner, no, was not worthy enough to work with me for 21 days. And I was very frustrated with that experience and I took it out on her and I, I didn't you know, do a lot of things that I probably should have done, but I couldn't stand her personality. And she had, and more so than her personality, she had no skill level. She okay. couldn't do anything. And that was my, my issue with her. It wasn't who she was, it was what she was bringing to the table. Right, she did not bring anything to the table to support us. Okay. And that frustrated me to no end. And for 21 days having to deal with this and you do everything, I mean. I did everything for the first 12 days, literally. And she did nothing but watch. And everything she did do that I asked her to do, I either had to redo it or it didn't work. And okay. so we had to redo it again. And I was just, you know, after two weeks, like, I, I, <laughs> enough is enough. Enough is enough. But you made it through. Yeah. We both made it through to 21 days in our own way. <laughs> okay. Now, as far as food, I know there's one amazing scene. And if I have going forward, am I able to show it? I hope I can. There was a snake that a producer got bitten by prior to you guys starting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a very dangerous, one of the most dangerous land snakes on the planet. And it had bitten my producer with just one fang and did that damage to his foot um, through his boot. And we were naked and it was, um, they were everywhere. But the, I mean, how do you function seeing and knowing that there's like deadly frogs, snakes, everything out there? Like, how were you not always on edge? I was on edge. And that's one of the reasons why I was frustrated with my teammate, because I had to look out. You know, I could I could never take a break. I couldn't be like, I don't have to do anything right now because my teammate will take care of it. I mean, it was it was just the edge of getting food and going out and getting wood to burn. I mean, I'm walking through a jungle that has multiple deadly animals all day long, getting firewood 
that she was not helping get, and then I've got to deal with her personality as well. And it's so just, basically, you would have been happier doing it on your own for 21 days. I told the camera crew that a couple of times that I would have preferred <laughs> to have been by myself. I was like, I don't need her. Get her out of here. I was like, she got to go. Yeah. Well, you might as well just put her in a hole and you keep it moving. You know. But I, you had to finish with both of you at the end. Right. Yeah. Oh my God. It just makes me nuts just thinking about like the snakes and the apes and then having this partner that was crazy. But besides that, now you're from Connecticut. Yep. You had a very interesting childhood. Yes, I did. Thank you. Um, that's, a, which, that's a polite way. Yes. I, and, I, and I, you know what? It's interesting, but you came out above it, which makes me really happy for you. I think that that is the best attribute that I have to offer is that I did not quit and that I am the person that I am. Okay. I've got flaws just like every other human being on the planet. None of us are flawless. You know, but I think the strength and the playfulness of my personality is remarkable compared to what I went through for 20 years. 100%. Um, this is uh, Shane's um, autobiography. Yep. And he wrote it 100% himself. You didn't have a ghostwriter, right? No ghostwriter. Okay. No. And it's, it's, I think it kind of like takes you along with him and seeing his experience. And it's definitely a reader that you can, I read it in, you know, maybe like, I think I read it in like a week. And it's something that everybody should pick up and see his experience and see where he came from, you know. Being a, a resident of uh, Connecticut. Thank you. It's pretty yeah. exciting. I love this state. It's beautiful. It is. And now do you still get out and are you able to still get out and travel besides doing the show? Uh, yeah, I do. I've, I've been to 72 different countries around the world. And for 13 years, I spent five months a year out of the country every year just backpacking and it just, uh, I didn't, at first I started traveling and it was very posh and, you know, and staying in resorts and hotels and things like that, but I wasn't getting a feel of the culture and the people and I wasn't growing as a human being. So I decided to strip myself down and stay in $5 night lodging and live like the people and eat like the people and travel like the people and try to learn what my fellow planetary citizens are like. Right. Now, do you think that's helped you like grow up, like something that you missed um, in your childhood? Um, I don't, I think it's helped me grow up a lot. I don't know about missing, you know, things from my childhood because those things are, I'm never going to get them back. Mm -hmm. Um, the one thing that I learned is that life will take you apart and it did take me apart. And if you don't take it from it, you know, so if you want something out of life, you've got to go get it because if you just sit back and relax and wait, it will break you down to nothing. 100%. Yeah. And so I learned, okay, I'm going to take what I want and I've learned to, you know, go out and take what I want have some fun and, and enjoy some things that I want to enjoy. Sure. There, uh, there's been a lot of criticism that's been on your blogs and <laughs> I told him I was going to bring it up. So don't think I'm the evil person or I'm the villain because I'm not. But one comment that someone said is that you suffer from like mommy issues and that's why you treated Kim the way you did when you were out in, uh, in Costa Rica. Yeah, I, I will not deny that I definitely have some female abandonment issues that I'm dealing with every day um, because, you know, my parents have kicked me out of the house when I was six years old and I haven't had a woman stay in my life for any long period of time there you know for whatever reason sometimes it's my fault sometimes it's dynamics it doesn't matter what it is but in my mind you know it's I'm still unworthy of anyone's real love and attention so I have the issues that being said you saw 44 minutes of 200 plus hours of a TV show they spun it any way they wanted to and you don't even know half of the things that this girl was talking about and crying about and whining about when it was off camera <laughs> and they made sure. me the bad guy. Sure, that's what they all say. <laughs> all it's all it's all our fault as of women. Of course, come on. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, I do think that you did a majority of the work from what we saw. And again, you're right; it was over 200 hours, and they made you look like the villain. But yeah, yeah, they definitely made me look like the villain, and it's fine. I mean, that's what they want to do. I, I was a child about it. I was very upset, and you know took it out on my producers and camera crew privately um, over the way they portrayed me. I had to apologize to them multiple times on camera, off camera, publicly, non-publicly, just to but let them know I love those it guys. It happened and you like have to move forward from it. Exactly. I mean, would you do another experience with Kim if they gave you 21 days in season two? I would never do another experience with Kim. No, I will do another episode with a stronger girl, but uh -huh. I will not be put in an environment with a weaker girl again. It's tough. It's tough. It's so much work. And you can see at the end of the show that I'm completely weak and I've got no energy left because I did everything yes. you know, for 12 days. And then I lost a little bit of energy. And then I had to do everything again for three days, literally without sleep while she was crying on the ground with some you know, dietary issues. Sick. Mm, yeah. But my question for you is, 
Was there anything positive that you thought that Kim brought to the table? Absolutely. She taught me a lot about fire. Some of the yeah. other couples had some issues with fire. They couldn't keep it burning and they couldn't keep it big enough. And the way that she organized things um, and the sticks and taught me a tremendous amount about fire. She's amazing on that level. And good at almost lighting you on fire as well. Yeah, yeah that's the thing that I didn't understand. <laughs> she had one skill and I gave her the responsibility of that and she just about burns me alive. I'm like, wow, that girl was not very trustworthy. <laughs> I shouldn't be laughing, but I no, will say... I was laughing. She was very upset. She had the camera. She was like, I almost killed Shane. I almost burned him alive. I'm but like, you stop. really did almost die, though. Yeah, I'm like, stop. It's okay. Just record it. It's good. I'm done. It's over with. We're all set. Come on. I'm alive. We're good, you know? Um, I smoked out, but we're good. <laughs> completely black. There was flames everywhere, and he was sleeping, and she was supposed to man the fire. And hence, you'll see more when you watch the episode, but it was pretty intense. Yeah, it was it was very intense, and it, that's the second intense moment that I had that day because the slide when I slid off the rocks and not, you know with my broken toes and and some of the places that the rocks went into um, caused me tremendous pain. So it's 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 something that I don't think until you experience it, just watching it, it wasn't enough. Like just seeing all those things happen and all the animals, you know, it just it's crazy to me. And I, I commend you for finishing Twenty One Days. Thank you, I appreciate it. That's all I ever wanted was the respect that I think that we deserve uh, for that environment. Oh, that location hands down. was brutal. Uh, hands down, it, once you watch it. It almost like, I want to say, like, are you on set? Like how, you know, like it just doesn't make sense to me. I would have quit day one. That would have been me. Where's the hotel? Give me some food. Because not only you're not eating, you're with a horrible partner, but you're surviving all the way solely on yourself. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the things that we had to deal with. I mean, she wouldn't cuddle with me at night. She couldn't handle the sexuality of being that close to me. And so I froze at night and she chose to sleep on the ground next to the fire. And I was bitten in my groin area by a bullet ant, which was incredibly <gasps> painful. And a bullet ant is like two inches long. And I cannot describe to you the pain that shot through my body for 10 minutes when it happened. It actually woke me up out of my sleep. And from that moment on, I said, I'm not sleeping on the ground. I don't care if I freeze, I'm sleeping in the platform. Right. And she wouldn't get in a platform with me and she slept by the fire. So I froze and she was quite warm. I mean, could you at least put something in between you guys so that you I, wouldn't, I mean, it's not like you even had energy to have sex. So it's, yeah, that's I mean, the thing I didn't get, you know. Even if I did like her, I couldn't waste the calories to have sex with her. So, you know, it, did, it didn't even matter. If I, even if I was attracted to her, you know, um, I, I couldn't waste that energy level. So I don't know. We tried everything. I tried to put blankets. I tried to bring her in. We tr I tried to, you know, be the big spoon. We tried to back up, back up, and so she'd wrap around me. But no way. She you wanted no part of it. butt to butt. We could have, but she, she didn't. She wanted no part of it. Ugh, that's so horrible. I mean, the experience alone and then not having someone be on your side, but... Besides that, I mean, you finished the 21 days and now, or is there any like, um, ex like exploring that you're doing coming for the summer? Um, yeah, I'm going out to Puerto Rico in a couple of weeks to go scuba diving with the bioluminescence wow. uh, on, in Vieques Island. Um, I do a lot of extreme sports around the world. I love it. And, you know, I want to experience as much as I can on this planet. So yeah, Shane I, off the grid if you're, you want to <laughs> see his experiences. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's pretty amazing. You know, I mean, I, you know, I rock climb, ice climb, skydive, scuba dive, snowboard, surf all over the world. So and there's video footage of it, too, because that's really cool. Like, uh, how you do like the surfing and you have like the GoPro that yeah I live with my that. GoPro camera my friends are always like Shane put the camera down you know yeah. but I can't because it's you know when you tell people that you've traveled all over the world and you do all these things most of the time guys are pretty good at lying about things and it's very easy for a girl to be like wow you're lying that's not possible but I record everything to document it because as we say in the adrenaline world if it's not on video it didn't happen sure <laughs> you have to have it so you have to have it on video and that's why you have 21 days on video on Discovery yes so. I do it's amazing if you want further information on shane please check him out on shane off the grid he's got an amazing website he'll take you through all of his experiences and check him out on the discovery channel thank you shane it's been exciting oh thank you adele it's been a pleasure i'm I so happy meeting you. no yeah. me too man it's been exciting thank you very much <laughs> awesome right, awesome thank you. as yep. you all know i have a, a bunch of guests in the studio today uh, more than i've ever had which should be uh, pretty interesting I have a wonderful foundation. They are all representatives of the Arm Foundation, which is started by Randy. Yes. And um, he, they're all gonna give us a little description of how they're all involved, and um, we'll move on from there. So welcome. All right, thank you very much, Adele. Um, thanks for have, having us. We are known as the Abroad Reserve Medical Foundation, Arm Foundation for short. And uh, my name is Randy Quaid. I'm the founder and um, executive chairman of the foundation. 
Uh, my name is Amanda, I'm the social expert. And how are you involved in ARM? Basically, I bring in all like the media, getting our name out there to so that everybody out there can actually know who we are. Okay, so like kind of like you do like all the marketing and everything. Yeah. And um, are you from uh, Ghana? Ghana. Okay, yes. so you're from Ghana. So and how about for you? I'm from Ghana also. Okay. I all actually right. um, grew up. I was born in London, but I was raised in Ghana. So okay. Yeah, I and have then, a mixture of both. <laughs> and then now you're in the fabulous yes. place of Connecticut. Connecticut yes. So. <laughs> <laughs> and please. Hi, I'm Renee. I'm the research development coordinator. Um, I actually joined because I'm a, I'm a nurse. I work at Yale New Haven Hospital. Okay. And Randy came to me with the idea of saying um, that he knew about hospitals back home that didn't have much. And I work with a whole bunch of supplies. I see it every day that we waste so much things, you know, how many gauzes I throw away and flushes I throw away. So um, I thought it would be a great cause. Yeah, I know it definitely is. Please <laughs> go ahead. Hi, I'm Tunde. Uh, Tunde Adebayo Esquire, to be exact. Randy and I are colleagues from maybe 10, 15 years now. We went to school together. He brought the idea to me, and I said, absolutely, I'll help him. I'm the guy behind the scenes, pulling the contracts, doing the paperwork. Um, we actually work out of my office, too, so that's Great. me. Wonderful. And to the back. Uh, Jimmy Sakhar, I'm from Uganda, and I've known Randy for about two years. And as of two weeks ago, I'm the newest member of the team, and I'm so proud to be a, to be a part of it. Wonderful. Yep. And East. I'm Natasha St. Just, um, a board member, also a designer. Um, my role is um, the last event we did, we, I was the coordinator for the fashion segment. So that's basically my job, just behind the scenes, making sure things go smooth. Wonderful. Yes. yes. Just recently, uh, Randy had a fundraiser at the Artist Collective. Yes. And it was a wonderful event. They had uh, traditional um, African gowns. And please tell mm -hmm. me a little bit about the event. Well, um, it's the, the name of the event was called the Taste of Africa. What we wanted to do is we actually wanted to bring Africa to America. There's so much that we don't see, we don't see outside of America. So we wanted to bring what we, what we experience in Africa back into America and experience it with everybody else. So, you know, people that are, have not had the opportunity to experience <coughs> Africa can actually get that chance. And so we actually sat down together. Um, we came up with some ideas and some um, traditional performances that we can have at the event that we feel like people will be excited about. Wow. And it was a really great event. Um, we had a live band there. We have live poetry. They, had, um, they were speaking a little bit of Swahili, a little bit of Tree, which is from the Ashanti tribe. I don't know if you heard of it, of the Ashanti tribe. I have not. Oh, well, well it's one of the most popular tribes in Africa. In so yeah, in Ghana, West Africa to be exact. And um, so that was, that was the taste of Africa. And, um, Natasha, she was actually worked with us for the fashion segment. So we had a lot of African fabrics and African traditional wear that was in the, in the fashion show, and it was really, really good. Um, if you see the pictures on Facebook, you can check it out. Um, you can go to www.facebook.com slash abroad foundation, and all the pictures should be there. Yeah, and I will actually have footage that will roll that we were just talking about showing how wonderful that was. Now. Who designed all of the um, attire that was for the um, fashion show? I'll let Natasha take it. Oh, we have so much different designers. Oh, we had a designer come down from New York, um, Makewea. Her pieces were traditional African fabric. It was like a, a modern pieces. Um, we had Shen um, from Connecticut. We had local designers. I was also one of the designers in it, so it was very dope. It was it was from New York and Connecticut, so it was a, a broad. Yeah. So have you reached out to, to New York to kind of make a partnership with them? Yes, um, we're actually starting a new um, um, what is I'll call it a regional chapter okay. in New York. I like I like for Tony to, to talk about that because he's the one. Yes, that so essentially um, the New York chapter. We have a lot of connects out there. Um, we've actually were born and raised. Well, I was born and raised in Brooklyn, New York. So a lot of people that I know um, in the medical field, particularly my sister um, and a bunch of other people that I know, what we've decided is um, to broaden the horizons of the Broad Reserve Medical mm -hmm. Foundation by starting a regional chapter in New York so that we can get an outreach, you know, through different media as well as other individuals in the community that also have um, nonprofits catered in their initiative towards, you know, giving back to Africa. So what we'll do is essentially in the coming year or so, maybe sooner, come up with an event where we'll introduce ourselves to the New York chapter. Okay. Yes, and if you, if you guys see the tape for the um, Taste of Africa, it should be coming out soon on YouTube. We are shooting a little commercial that we should put up. You should definitely see some of the New York guys that came out that actually wants to be a part of this um, great foundation. 
And um, if, uh, like I said at the event, that if you're a man of vision or a woman of vision, you should definitely see that this foundation is going somewhere. And we want people to support as much as possible. Of course, it's a, it's a great benefit. And now when people do make donations, it will go to the medical supplies. Now how do you know that it's gonna be getting to the actual locations? Yes, um, what we actually have set up now is that we have a, a thing called a medical mission trip. And this is a, a medical mission trip where we all get together um, we, ha we don't have any major sponsorship yes, yet, so what we do is we actually use our own money, we're using our own money to travel back to West Africa or various African countries like Uganda. We're planning on going to Uganda, Liberia, Nigeria, and we're going to basically donate the supplies that, we, that we've received so far. Mm -hmm. there's, um, I say this all the time, there's two million tons of medical supplies that go to waste in the United States. And um, what our Broad Reserve Medical Foundation is trying to do is tap into that two million tons and um, at least get a little bit of that, <laughs> ship it down there, sure. and go down there to make sure that we actually, it goes to the, the right people. Mm -hmm. That is what we, we, we are trying to do. The, the supplies has to get into the right hands. Yes. So we have to basically go down there ourselves and do the work ourselves. It's very important, I think, that a lot of small things that we take for granted Yes. Um, and now if the website is one of the ways that people can get in touch with yes. you, how else can people get in touch with you? Um, like, like you said, we have the website. It's, it's, you can get to the website at www.abroadfoundation.org. Or you can also go through our Facebook. Um, that is one of the ways that you can get in contact with us. And then we also all have Instagrams. Every one of us okay. have Instagrams. Sure. And you can hashtag Abroad Foundation. If and you hashtag the Abroad Foundation, a whole bunch of stuff is going to come up and you can definitely look it up. Um, get in contact with us and we'll be able to you know network from there okay and if somebody wanted to join the foundation is that allowed as well yes okay. we are <laughs> <looking. Of course. laughs> mm -hmm. we are looking for people to join this foundation we want this foundation to be the next red cross sure. we want it to be the next salvation army i feel like we have the potential to do something big and as young people young african black people we, we don't want to make this foundation just for young african americans or young africans we want to make sure that every one of us who has a heart to help can join. Sure. And if you don't have the heart to help, we'll teach you. <laughs> okay, that's the best way, right? Definitely, that's definitely. It's hands-on uh, uh, teaching. Now, I noticed that you had the mayor of Manchester. He yes. was, is he heavily involved as well? Well, we, we actually reached out to him. His name is uh, Mayor Leo Dina. Okay. And um, he, we, I went there with my partner Tunde. I think, Renee, were you there when we went no, to go see? Okay. You weren't there? We went to go see um, the mayor, and we spoke to him about some of the things that we wanted to do. And he actually connected us, us to um, a foundation in, in Manchester, Connecticut. It's called the Purple Heart Homes. Yes. And what they do is they actually build um, houses for retired Army veterans. Mm -hmm. And um, we went to go help out. And we went to the meetings. And we were trying to find out a way that we can actually assist in helping them out. Sure. So that's one of the ways that we actually decided to give back. Wonderful. Well, not only are you guys accepting, you know, you're also going out in the community, which is wonderful. Yes, and yes, that yes. makes it, uh, you know, it's pretty beneficial when you're still playing that role. Now, I just want to know, like, how did you, aside from, like, you seeing it, like, us wasting, did you, like, have any, like, issues when you lived in Africa as far as medical supplies? What? That, that, is, that is a big, big, big issue down there. Um, one of the things that, are, that Africans, or West, African rural um, areas, the, the challenges that they face is that they have lack of medical infra infrastructure. They have, they don't have, they have lack of access to medical care. There's, there's, there's one, if you go to certain town, towns, there's about 25,000 people, and there's only one doctor to 25,000 people. Wow. So imagine that, one doctor serving 25,000 people, that's, nah. that's too much. They, 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 they get tired, and then even if they're dedicated after a couple of years, they're, 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 they're tired, they don't, they don't want to do it anymore. They're, the passion that they had, they started with, it's not there anymore. Not there. You know what I mean? Because it's too much toil and too much, you know, headaches and heartaches on them. So what we are trying to do is alleviate some of that stress and alleviate some of that burden by sending these hospital supplies and let, letting the, the children out there know that there are people outside of this, what well, their environment that actually cares. Because some of them don't even have TV to watch. They don't even have any magazine to read. So when we go out there, they definitely see that these, these people are inspiring us. They are, they, are, they are electrifying something within us to also become better, you know, humanitarians or citizenship of the world. Sure. Well, I am so proud that you came up with this. Thank and you. I thank you so much for coming out here. I want everybody to go on their website thank and you. donate, or yes. just if you want to become a part of this foundation, you can do that as well. So this is what's happening in West Hartford. And I thank everybody from the Arm Foundation for coming out.
Thank you, Thank you for having us. Yeah. I'm here at a pretty exciting place. Um, I am at Flight Trampoline Park in New Britain, which is so much fun to bring to Connecticut. I mean, extreme sports are in, and we got it right here in Connecticut. I'm here with Dustin, one of the owners. Welcome. Thank you. So glad to have you on the show. Now, tell me about how you got started in the whole trampoline park thing. Um, well, I have two. I have two business partners who I recently joined in with them. And uh, the two of them and I had been in the restaurant industry for the past while. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we've been focusing on customer service. We understand cleanliness and all those, those things. And we kind of wanted to venture out. And uh, our group is based in the West Coast. Right. And, um, you know, these trampoline parks had really been taking off out in the West Coast. And we had an opportunity to kind of start getting involved. And we researched it. And uh, we thought, you know, this is a great business for us, and let's try and find a spot where, you know, that, that's untapped. Sure. And um, the East Coast, Northeast region here was, was really that spot. So we were excited to be the first trampoline park here in Connecticut. Um, and then and we're opening a few more up here in the Northeast at the, at the same time. Oh, you're doing, mo you're doing more openings at yes. one time. Yes. So right now, this was our first one here in the Northeast. Uh, we opened last week. And we're in the process of building three more wow. down in the Pennsylvania area, D.C., another one up here in the Connecticut area. Wow, so you're pretty busy. Real busy. Okay. But really excited to bring the concept out here. And the kids love it. The parents love it. Adults love it. It's been working out really well. Yeah, no, it's, it seems so much fun. Right now we're here and it's uh, the kids jump. So I believe it's like six and under get to jump and there's no one older than that. Yeah, right. So, so Monday through Friday in the morning from 10 to noon, we do a kid flight where we let the parents jump free with their children. Oh, that's um, great. They, you know, the, you pay for the child. Parents jump free, and we kind of let the children and the parents have the whole park to themselves. So it's a safer atmosphere and a more fun atmosphere for the parents and children to jump together. Okay, now what if it wasn't during like regular hours, like you wanted to come and jump with like you had teenagers and a little one? Is there still like a separate area? Yeah. So, so our trampoline park, it, you know, has has a lot of different sections. And we, we section off a six and under area to okay. keep it safe. You know, we don't want adults falling on kids or toddlers yeah. or anything like that. So we section that off. But we also have the, one of the largest open jump areas on the East Coast. Yeah. When by open jump, I mean that's it's an area for, for adults and teenagers and seven and up alike to jump together. Sure, absolutely. I mean, this place is amazing. I also saw um, something with like dodgeball. Is that for real? Yeah, it's it's the real deal. And uh, so we have a sectioned off dodgeball area okay. where we'll be doing full leagues and tournaments. Oh, and cool. and all day there's a referee that mans that area and is running games all day, kind of like going to the park and playing pickup basketball. Yeah, it's coming to the trampoline park and playing pickup dodgeball, and it's a so lot of fun. Awesome. Yeah. And it, it's a closed off area. Closed so off ball, area. The balls stay so in, cool. and everyone just goes at it, and it's wall to wall trampolines. You know, it's an, it's an experience most people in the nation haven't haven't had. No, know? not at all. Now, what about like corporate parties? Can someone like rent this facility out? Absolutely. We do, we do, so on the party section, we do birthday parties. Yeah. Um, we do corporate events. We do large group parties. And you know, you can either have your party here with other, other patrons or okay. you can rent the whole facility out to yourself. Okay. One thing that we do that's new and that a lot of other facilities don't do is we offer a slumber party as well oh, that's where so cool. where groups can rent out the facility for the night uh -huh. and we lock it in, uh -huh. you know, so no one in or out. Right. And uh, you know, they can jump around, they can watch movies on the projector uh -huh. and uh, you know, and they sleep right here. So it's awesome. Really Dang. awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I guess you just pay for it, like rent. So yeah, you that's get, right. Like, a, a night, you know, of uh, rent. That's right. And you, and you, when you bring in a large group, it's actually, you know, it's really affordable. Yeah, that's so awesome. Yeah. Now I also saw like some basketball hoops. Is that like slam dunking? Right. So we have another section with basketball hoops where you know we kind of give all those people that never dunked before that opportunity to dunk mm -hmm. and you know feel like they're flying. And um, yeah, we have we have a, a kids hoop and an adult hoop. So it's. Um, sure. Yeah, it's amazing. And then, you know, this last section over here, we have a, it's actually a foam pit area where people can flip into the foam pit so and, awesome. um, you know, and really practice. Yeah, I practice saw whatever. some people jumping and then they saw themselves on the screen after they jumped. So it's so yeah, cool. Right. So we have screens set up on a 15 second delay. So you can jump in, do your trick, land in the foam, get out and see what you just did. Yeah, it's so cool. Yeah. Everybody has to check it out. I mean, this place oh, is so awesome. I mean, I know it's summertime, so this is a great like activity for like the rain and everything. You right. Know? And since we've been open these last, you know, this last week, we've booked 50 plus birthday parties. Wow. And we just really feel like, you know, it's we're offering the best birthday party in 
Connecticut. Yeah. Um, we really feel that way, and, and the customer response has been, you know, has, has proven it, to be sure. honest. Yeah. How, how long in advance do you have to plan if you want a birthday party? Yeah, we try to have customers book at least two weeks in advance. Okay, mm -hmm. all right, awesome. Well, I am telling you, Dustin, this place yeah. is awesome. No, we have to you. all check it out. and You have you guys, to check it out. You have to. You hear that? It's very have important. To. It's a must. So, Flight Trampoline Park, check it out. That's what's happening.